In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Welcome all our shut-ins, all our people in TV land who are watching us or through their computers. We pray for you. We hope this epidemic will soon come to an end so we'll be able to get back to normal. We pray for you that we that your homes be filled with peace and kindness and that you'll be renewed and refreshed after this break. So as today is the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his gift of pardon and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, I'm a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God on the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke to his friends. Does not the human being have a hard service on earth? And are not their days like the days of a laborer? Like a slave who longs for the shadow and like a laborer who looks for his, their wages. So I am allotted months of emptiness and nights of misery are apportioned to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, 
and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath and my eye will never again see good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge as to not make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips, help you proclaim his holy gospel in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Lord. To you, o Lord. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. 
That evening at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'd just like to start out by reminding everyone that um, we are celebrating this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Ordinary Time, Missionary Sunday in the Diocese of London. It was transferred from October due to COVID. And there was a need for each and every one of us to be missionary. As Bishop Fabro has told us, we're missionary disciple, missionary church forming disciples of Jesus. But there's the missions which have a larger outreach to smaller communities. And as much as we are struggling in this COVID crisis, they struggle just as much or more. And so there will be an opportunity for you to give to the missions. And if you go to our website, you'll be able to find the information on how to give uh, by check or donation and just putting in the notes that it's for Missionary Sunday. So we thank you in advance for anything you can do to help with the missions. Job in our first reading is in a very bad place, mentally, physically, and spiritually. I've been there, and I think at some point we all have. Many of you may be in that place right now. For any of you struggling with the effects of this pandemic and this lockdown, please know that we continue to lift you up in our prayers. There was not much for Job to grasp at in the way of hope, and hope for us also can sometimes seem fleeting. Minor glimpses that seem to be fed to us from podiums on TV screens, or even from ambos, such as this. But let me tell you that hope from the Lord is steadfast, not fleeting. In our first reading today, from the very first line right through to the last, there's an overwhelming sense of despair. Despair, although a miserable place to be, leaves us desperate. Desperate for relief from our suffering. Desperate for answers to the question why. And in all that desperation, we cry out. Cry out to the one who knows all and sees all and promise that one day all things would be revealed. Like I said, we all can find ourselves in that place, but what we do in that desperation is what forges the path to healing and opens up for us that ability to receive understanding. Maybe we don't get an answer to the question why, but we are reminded that there is one who has all power, and that one is God. And even in an angry rant to God, about our circumstances, we acknowledge his sovereignty and his ability to rescue us from this place. And so in our hopelessness, we find hope in God. And that is exactly the reason that God's divine plan for our salvation hinged on him becoming one of us, coming into the, coming into the world as one of us, humbling himself, taking the form of a man, we do not have a God that is unacquainted with our suffering. He chose to suffer as one of us. What an amazing model of Jesus we find in Paul. In our second reading today, he speaks to this point exactly. Do you think that Paul made up a story about being weak so that he could appeal to the weak? No. In our second reading, we hear that any difficulty we find ourselves in is actually an opportunity to bring hope to those around us suffering the same afflictions. Paul becomes all things to all people so that he might save some. 
And when he says, to the weak I became weak, he allowed them to see his weakness. He didn't create some fake persona to trick people into trusting him. And we don't need to make things up to be able to relate to those we encounter. It is in our genuineness that we find that common thread of humanity, and maybe the common thread of morality. We all have aspects of our lives that maybe we hide from others to avoid shame or the appearance of weakness or vulnerability. But each of those circumstances have value to the gospel message, the gospel message of hope. Always be ready to make a defense to anyone who demands from you an account of the hope that is in you. And hope is always one step away from hopelessness. So we must share our stories of hopelessness if we want to give any validity to our hope. We were not rescued from our misery and despair simply because Jesus loves us, but that we too might rise and serve others. If Jesus suffered as one of us so that we could come to him as one who understands our circumstances, then how much more are we to do the same? We are rescued so that victory over our difficulties can bear witness to others that they too can receive help by the power of God, help in their own lives. We've been healed so that we can serve. Like in our gospel today, Jesus healed Simon's mom and she got up and served them. I've got to remember that the next time Val's not feeling well. Be healed and make me supper. Maybe not. Anyway, that's what happened to those who Jesus healed in our gospel today. He cured many who were sick and cast out many demons. And suddenly, the next day, everyone is searching for Jesus. They told others about Jesus and what he did for them. When other people listen to our stories, are they left searching for Jesus? If not, maybe we didn't tell the whole story. Maybe we left out the part about Jesus. Maybe we don't even recognize the hand of God in our healings or in our victories over the difficulties we face. It can be very easy to explain away the miracles that happen in our lives. Maybe the prayers of another have brought a change to your circumstance. How can you speak of the power of prayer in your victory if you didn't even know you were being prayed for? If you're praying for someone, have the courage to let them know so that when they come out on the other side of that situation, we have at least provided them with the tools to share their experience of the power of prayer with others. I've talked a lot about hope. And the Catechism of the Catholic Church defines the virtue of hope as this. Hope is the theological virtue by which we desire the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness. Placing our promises, placing our trust in Christ's promises and relying not on our own strength, but on the help of the grace of the Holy Spirit. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. In scripture, God makes a lot of promises. He keeps them all, but they are fulfilled in his time. But how do we know if a promise is being kept if we don't even make it our business to know what those promises are? In the last verse of our gospel tonight, Jesus says, Let us go to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And so what was the message? Our gospel reading is from Mark, but the same account in Luke tells us a few verses before. Good news for the poor, release for the captives, sight for the blind, freedom for the oppressed, and the favor of the Lord. The gospel message, the good news, and the fulfillment of these promises of Jesus, release, healing, freedom and favor have been happening since Adam and Eve first fell from grace. Jesus isn't just telling us what he came to do. He is reminding us that he has always been doing it. It happened for Job. It happened for me. 
And if it hasn't happened already, it will happen for you. And when it does, give thanks to God and share your story. Because our stories will change people's lives. Let us stand together now as we prepare to profess our faith according to the Apostles' Creed. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He has sent into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge about the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. God our Father, we turn to you now to offer our prayers and intentions for the needs of our parish and the needs of the people throughout the world. We pray today for Pope Francis and his continued desire to work for the missionary church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That women and men engaging in the church's mission activity be strengthened in their labors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That elected officials working to hasten God's reign experience the support of those who work with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and the elderly struggling with the effects of COVID-19 come to experience God's healing peace. In a special way, we lift up those in our faith community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this parish family, seeking nourishment at this feast through the word, continue to respond the need to the needs of the last and the least. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died longing for a place of eternal rest come to see the face of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear our prayers in the name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord our God, we pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord is the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant that we pray 
that we may become, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. And we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You form man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your, in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald Peter Faber, our Bishop, Joseph Jabrowski's auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For well, the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. 
will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer, Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Who's busy there? Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
That is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, never stop working. Even when I feel it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Let us pray. O God, who have willed we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. And we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, and with your you. spirit. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord most high. You hid in glory and now revealed in you our Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. The sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us? Now, what a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, 